Hi, I'm Eloisa. Uh, welcome to the, this YouTube channel. Uh, today, this is a video on an experiment that I'm doing in our family with me and the three kids. Um, that is, they are 11, 10 and 8 and they're moving out of home. Uh, what that means is that they're no longer going to live in the house. They're going to live in a tent set up outside um, that they have had to work f for money to purchase over the last two months. And um, they are going to be... Uh, everything's outside. So they've got an outside toilet that they've had to clean up and, um, and, and create. They've had a... got to set up an outside kitchen um, complex. We have an outside fridge, so they've got access to keeping their food, um, but they have to work out how they're going to set up their kitchen and washing up and how they're going to do that. Um, they're going to have to set up their own sort of living area, um, either in their tents or outside their tents. And they're going to be responsible for all of those areas, so keeping it clean, tidy. Um, they've got their own individual areas and shared areas. So why are we doing this? As their parent, We've taught them a lot of unloving, un, like uh, from God's perspective. So, a lot of these videos, I just want to say, um, I talk about our love and truth and humility and morality and ethics and um, uh, teachings of divine truth. And these experiments are based on the teachings um, by Jesus and Mary Magdalene, or also known as A.J. Miller and Mary Lark. And they call them divine truth or they're also known as God's way and their teachings about fundamentally about having a relationship with God um, but and understanding God's laws of the universe um, and, and getting an education in what love actually is what truth actually is um, like absolute truth from God's perspective what morality is doing the right thing from God's perspective and this experiment is um, no exception it's based on those teachings and so why I need to mention that is that um, <clears throat> one because those teachings have changed my life two because my motivation for um, doing what I'm doing is based on teaching the children um, principles of God's truth not because I'm just sick of having them in the house and of it being dirty now there are times when I'm sick of them and being in the house and it being unclean but there's bigger reasons that are what I want to teach them. And um, what I'm wanting to teach them is about their attitude and how important it is for them to choose to do what's moral and right. And for them to make a choice and decision to actually love themselves and others. And that includes keeping an environment clean. Um, to see the impact that their choices and decisions on have others. So though they often feel that things are very unfair for them and that they might have to do more cleaning up or than others. They perceive some discrepancies that aren't often true, but that's what they feel. Um, and actually seeing that while they then act that it's unfair so I'm not doing it, they actually impact on others who are also sharing their environment. Um, it's also to see that their treatment of me is not, not good. That if they and don't treat uh, me well, they're not going to treat other adult women well either. And uh, that's, that's concerning for me now. And I also am thinking ahead. When they have partners or flatmates, um, I would, you know, I, I don't, I need to correct my irresponsible actions of teaching them that women will clean up after them no matter what and mummy will do everything for them and that they need to learn, like, no, hold on, I actually have a responsibility to maintain an environment if I'm sharing an environment. So there's a lot of different things that are trying to teach. I want to just to be clear, there is a dynamic between men and women in our family. That's that's wrong, and we're try, I'm trying to challenge that as well. Um, so this is this is the experiment. So some of the principles of truth that I'm um, attempting to teach the children here is self responsibility, um, care of their environment, care of others, uh, love of themselves, and I when I say care, I'm talking so love and care. Um, also that. Making an emotional shift, um, which is an attitude change, is more powerful and has very positive results than just taking physical action. So my husband, Peter, he believes that 
taking physical actions, and he will take many, many physical actions, is going to make change. When it never does, because if the emotional cause is never dealt with, then the physical actions at some point you're going to reflect that. So it doesn't really matter how much you do physically, if you do not feel the emotional cause in yourself and you do not change the emotional reason why you're doing something, it's not really changed. And this is one of the most important lessons that I feel um, has been neglected in our family and I feel it's reinforced by the dad at the moment. Um, and because I have some injuries with men, I'm also reinforcing that that's the best way to do things. when actually the best way to do things is to deal with the emotional reason why we do the thing in the first place, work through that, release it, and then a lot of um, good things happen. Now the kids don't believe that, so this is an opportunity for, for that to be exposed. This is also an opportunity for me to correct a lot of damage that I've created in the past, um, and to learn a lot about my own feelings and emotions, an opportunity for me to feel them. So. Um, that some of the damage is the lack of responsibility. They feel that mum will be responsible for them. Um, lack of love of others. They feel they can walk over everyone else and that I should do everything for them. Um, now, this obviously links in to the fact that I've done those things to avoid feelings in myself of feeling unloved and feeling I don't have a role and feeling I don't have a purpose and feeling guilty if I don't do everything for them, um, that I'm not a good mum. So all of these things, I, 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 well, they're already actually are starting to come up and I feel through this, um, this experiment they'll be more exposed and, have, and come up more fully. So um, now I've got my own space because I've got a whole little house now, um, I can actually use that time to, to feel and take the time to feel about it in the moment, which I feel is a really, really positive step for me and my soul growth and also for the children. So how did this idea come about? Well, I've been thinking for quite a while. I'm always trying to think of ways that I can correct the damage that I've done. So as soon as I get, usually, well, honestly, it's always external feedback of, um, of where I'm at, um, personally and emotionally. There's a step where I sort of feel about that a bit, and then I see, I start to see how all of that is affecting everyone around me, particularly the children. And when I see how it's project, project, um, like affecting the children, in the past I got very guilty and upset and like punishing myself and done all these things that honestly didn't work and just were a waste of time. Now I go, right, well now I can see what I'm doing, what am I going to do to change that? And so I'm, I'm trying to think and I, um, I have a lot of discussions with my friends about uh, parenting and how 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 do I you know I often ask uh, Jesus and Mary and Tristan like what would, what do you reckon in this or what would you do or what what's your idea or what do you think's happening here or um, and they often give me just uh, information or suggestions about all kinds of different things or often we just have conversations and from those conversations I'll get an idea um, which again is an external <laughs> help from my spirit guides who often are uh, giving me a lot of information a lot of help to try and get me to do these things. And because I really want to correct the things that I've done wrong with the kids from God's perspective, because I know they're wrong now, I really do, and I can see how they're playing out, and I can see that if I don't make some changes now, these kids are going to be a nightmare for their, their future partners and anyone they live with, and just in general in society, you know? And so I need to do what I can to correct that while I've still got the opportunity. Whether or not they choose to change is up to them now. They have free will and they're at an age, they're old enough now that uh, yes, they'll respond to changes that I make in me, but they have some pretty firmly set addictions and beliefs now and they're acting on those. And so part of this experiment is that they choose, um, that they can see what they're acting on, what they do, and that actually they can make some different choices. So choices and attitude is really important in this experiment. That's what we'd look, I'm looking at to expose and change, uh, if they want to. So this came about, so I was thinking about just different ways that I could challenge it. And one of the issues in our home um, is that, as I've previously mentioned, is that responsibility of the, just the care of the environment and care of other people in the environment. <clears throat> it's lacking. There's no responsibility. So they don't, you know, like... 
the small physical things are they don't just wipe up automatically after they don't clean up after their lunch they just sort of leave it for however long or I have to ask them to do it um, they they leave mess all over the place um, they they use my things um, and and don't clean them or put them away properly. So when I go to use them, they're not there, um, or they're they're dirty or they're sometimes damaged. So all of these different things need to be um, remedied. I feel and they need to see what's happening and what they're doing, and then find a way to to change that. Now we we live in a small two bedroom um, house. The kids all sleep in one room um, here. Pete and I don't live together. We haven't for the last two years. So um, at Pete's house, they have their, um, uh, Izzy has her own room and the boys share a room. Um, here, all three share a room and I have my own room. Um, they, so I, I kind of like, it's hard because they've also got a lot of codependence between each other of their sort of uh, barter and do things for each other. So they sort of will pick up the pieces that they're happy to do and then try and get someone else to do the bits they're not happy to do. Um, they don't see really what they're really like or what their real condition is like or, and that's not just because of that, that's also because I've tried to protect them from their own condition and try and help them a lot. And that's actually been detrimental to their growth because they need to see where they're at so they want to grow. Um, or they have the opportunity to want to grow and yeah so so I, I found it a little bit hard to try and create or simulate a situation where they're on their own and they have the full impact of all their actions to know that they have to do something different in order to clean up or to to um, like you know if they leave dirt then it's still going to be there four days later they don't see how much is done for them they don't notice that. So I was just thinking they need to have some kind of experience like on their own. Now I'm thinking of building some little pods on my um, property um, uh, for, for some other projects and um, for some accommodation purposes. And I was like, oh, it'd be so good if they were made, but they're not. So anyway, in a passing conversation, I actually just mentioned this and um, Jesus gave me an awesome suggestion. He said, well, do they make pocket money? And I was like, well, no, I don't give them pocket money, but they have the opportunity to work and I will pay them for, for good work as long as their attitude's right and as long as they do a good, thorough job um, that, you know, I would like done. And Jesus said, well, why don't you give them two months? That's long enough to per, uh, make enough money to purchase a tent and then they can move out. That would give them their own little setup. I was like great idea so I went home and I really thought about it and I wrote down a plan about how I was going to do this and what it was going to be like and um, when they'd move out so I picked a date so 5th of January was the move out date and um, and I looked at it you know I actually did a little research to find out like how much tents were and things like that to see that it was reasonable and then I proposed it to the kids and I said right this is what's going to happen you're moving out and you're going to have an outside kitchen and you're going to have, oh no, oh, I just said you're moving out. You've got two months until the 5th of January. Um, in that time I'm offering you employment and I'll pay you, um, you know, per hour to do a certain amount of, uh, like as long as your attitude and the job is done well, I'm happy to pay you for that. You can purchase your own tent and your own living setup. What you choose to purchase and how you do that is totally up to you. If you would like to ask me any questions, I'm happy to answer them, but you need to ask me questions. I'm not going to just give you all the information. Um, as you can imagine, they freaked out and started like having what I call meltdown or freak out, which is, mommy, like, we can't do this. We're never going to be able to have enough money. Like, this is your mean. Like, I can't believe you're doing this. We'll be so good. Mom, see, my attitude's already changed. Because uh, I gave them the reasons why I was doing it as well, because I feel it's very important to... Uh, tell children why you're doing what you're doing um, uh, at least at the start I have a few precursors to that uh, sometimes it's actually good to set up an, uh, a loving experience for them and then afterwards to speak to them about it because then they actually learn things and you can use um, what they've learned in their own experiences to teach certain things whereas what I found personally um, is that my words, they don't even listen to me anymore and it's only when I make a firm um, choice in my own heart and then I take a firm loving action that they actually will take me seriously. And so this is why I don't always now explain things to them is more that um, 
it's hard here because there's not a hard and fast rule. I will explain God's principles and I will explain, um, a, you know, truth and loving um, things behind certain things. But I'm often now also setting up um, activities or um, experiments and experiences. The kids often don't know that they're being set up, but I am simulating, not simulating those, but um, creating those so that the children have an experience and then when they ask certain questions I can refer back to certain principles and they've had an experience on their own through their own exploration uh, or their lack of it and we can use that as a talking point and I'm finding that to be a much much better way than just all this talk because honestly all the talk they can say the right things they can say things but their actions are demonstrating where they're really at right now um, and it's been an important lesson for me to learn um, is that um, action and changes in my own self and my own soul changes. They're the most powerful thing that creates the rapidest change in myself and the environment around me. And the children will take me far more seriously when I actually have had that change than if I'm in a state of hypocrisy or have not really experimented or done it myself. So that's an aside. So anyway, I laid it out. The children had their, you know, their their outbursts about how was, they weren't going to do it. Then the then the questions came. So they had their sort of anger and their, their crying in anger about it happening. And then they um, then they said, well, what about the kitchen? Like, how's that going to work? What are we going to do? So we talked about that. So there's an outside fridge and um, they've got access to tables and chairs. I said, well, you, it's up to you, but you're welcome to use these outside items. How you choose to set it up is, is how you choose to set it up. You know, so, so far, they've got their fridge, um, they've got a table, some chairs, and uh, two buckets to do their washing up in. <clears throat> they will find out that they're going to need quite a number of other things, um, but they're going to need to find out because I'm not um, telling them that. Um, and this is based not because I'm, I'm trying to punish them or make it hard for them, but because for so long I have helped them or I would have given them the answers and done it and they haven't learned anything from that because I've done it all for them. So the lesson here is that they need to think for themselves, seek answers for themselves, ask questions and then, set, and then come to know what they need for themselves through their own experience. So my motivation is not to harm or punish them, it's to enable them to find out about, wow, well, hold on, there's a lot of things that I don't know here. Um, they're missing a lot of education and um, internal knowledge of how to look after themselves. And this is something I need to help them correct because I created that in the first place. Um, well, me and my husband created that in the first place. So... Yeah, so it's been, um, so they did that anyway, so they, we had a bit of a discussion about the ins and outs and the details and certain things, so as an example, their kitchen set up, and then, um, yeah, and then very interestingly, the next day, 4.30am, I hear, I'm hearing all these like things outside, and I look out, and there are the kids doing jobs. Now, previous to this, they've had the opportunity and the jobs list for them for many months, and they've complained, not done it, um, not, not chosen to take the opportunity, not done it. Anyway, 4.30 in the morning, there they are, doing the jobs, like really good attitude that day, um, uh, excellent, excellent like job, and they actually did the job really well. I would like to say that it was very self-serving. Due to the fact that they knew they had to move out and purchase a tent, they know, like, and they know that that's not negotiable, they suddenly went, oh crap, I've got to make some money. Okay, well, now I've got to go do that. So because it's in their interest, they're doing it. Um, we still have an issue around work. That is that they don't respect me as their employer. They feel that um, they're the boss, that they should be paid for the jobs they want to do, not the jobs I want them to do. Um, that they feel they don't have to really do a thorough job. Um, they feel that um, they can do a half job and then I should finish that job for them. They feel that they shouldn't really have to do hard work. Again, that's been taught to them by the parents and the parents' beliefs of wanting to alleviate some of the pain from the parents. I'm talking the third person, but that's me and their dad, Pete. Um, but it's alleviate the, you know, um, our childhood pain. And we felt like, oh, well, we won't make them have to go through what we've had to go through. 
Unfortunately, that hasn't turned out well. Now we're re-educating. So there are some work ethic issues that now, as an aside, I'm going to have to make a new way of um, doing that. It's another experiment in itself. So I'll be changing up the work, um, the hours that they work, um, uh, the payment and also like the criteria. Um, we're going to sit down and have a discussion about that and then I'm going to just be a bit more hands-on supervision and also give them some jobs that I know they don't particularly like. They're totally capable of doing them but they don't like in order to challenge their attitude and emotion towards doing work for an employer. Um, now this is Again, with a long-term um, vision of that at some point they're going to need to get a job and they're going to be in the real world and they're going to work for somebody. And I would like them to have the experience of that when you work for somebody, you are doing, you are entering a contract with that person and you are saying, yes, well, I either agree or disagree to do what you're asking me. And if you disagree, you don't get the job. And, if, and you don't have to take that job. You can choose what job you want to take. But if you do do it, you need to do it to a high standard thoroughly and to follow the directions that you're given. Um, so that's an aside about the work. So yeah, so so we we I told them what they were going to do. They 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 got quite upset and angry about that. They knew that I was serious. They asked some questions. The next day, they took some action to start making some money. Um, a lot of their um, like false beliefs and fears came up about I'm not going to be able to make enough money or uh, you know I will it's going to be you know like they've got some fears about um, being like attack from inherited as well so then they were thinking about well do I lock my tent or how do I do that so we had some very good discussions about these different things that came up um, naturally and they asked questions so I uh, interacted with them and answered their questions and we talked about their fears and they were able to some at, at times emotionally connect to some of those things which is very positive and helped them um, yeah so this ended up happening and it carried on that each morning they were up at um, four it actually got earlier and earlier and earlier and I think the earliest was about uh, 10 to 4 they were up working and I was just like, hold on, we've got to just have a few rules here. So 5.30 was our work start time, um, just so that um, I, I could just have some, when I naturally wake up and just have an opportunity to feel and not have to be like straight out there working again. Again, it was an issue of employer versus employee dictating and employees are the kids and I'm the employer. And the kids again were dictating what was happening. So this is a theme in my life that I'm trying to change. So that was day one. <clears throat> that day I went to work on a bit of a high. Um, and uh, I went to the Divine Truth studio. And I was so, I was excited. <laughs> I get a bit um, hyper when I'm a bit excited and scared. <laughs> and I was like, a little bit, uh, uh, uh hyper with, with what was happening and I was telling uh, Tristan about it and he said why why like why have it that they can move back into the house if they change their attitude like why not encourage like yes they can but why not encourage them to just upgrade their home and their house and just keep upgrading and so that they actually like, learn the self responsibility and, and realize that they can actually um, purchase their own home and just get a better home you know one after the other I was like that's such a good idea and um, Kate was there as well uh, another a friend of mine and and it was so lovely we were all like just so excited about like all the possibilities and how, what we could do and if we'd had that opportunity and what it would really be like and all these things and then it was it was it was really lovely experience and um, and then it was quite funny because then we we're like, yeah, but we can't tell them unless the kids ask. So, <laughs> so there's all these people in the children's lives that are so talented and so gifted and have so many skills and from spiritual um, like experiences and knowledge about relationship with God and um, about how to you know love and truth and God's laws to builders and designers and videographers and video editors um, like people who have so many different passions and desires to programmers to people who are interested in like relationships families parents children 
environment projects like there's so much opportunity in in my in like my life and because the children are in part of my life like they also have these opportunities so um when Trish suggested this create a better home uh transition rather than just move back into mum's home transition you know with with the attitude you know that brought up the thing that they could actually go and be laborers for a builder friend of ours and learn and ask a lot of questions and um, God's Way, a company I'm a director of, and um, um, that is actually practically applying the teachings of divine truth in a practical manner. They are um, doing a lot of building projects at the moment. And so there is a, a so much opportunity for the children to actually learn about how to build and what to build, and they could actually get that knowledge and build their own house. And that is an opportunity they have if they want it. Um, and it came up as a suggestion, but they haven't acted on it yet. Um, and we've done a white card course, so the children now understand safety principles of um, the construction industry so that they can actually um, apply those. And they're doing a first aid course so that they can understand that as well. And so it's very interesting that I feel this experiment is just opportunities all around for me, um, for the children, and I know for certain that the more changes I can make in my own soul, and that's one of the main reasons for this, is for me to emotionally work through the issues that are still causing me to meet the addictions in the children, um, want a codependent relationship with them, and to be unloving in my interactions with them. I want to be a real parent from God's perspective. That means I need to become a moral, loving, truthful, um, emotional individual, and that's my journey. And that's nothing to do with the children, that's their choice if they want to. But as I engage that journey, I am finding that I want to correct the things that I have done wrong. And one of those is the way that I've chosen to parent. And <clears throat> it hasn't been based on love or truth or morality. And I'm using morality from right from I would like the children to learn how to be ethical and, and for myself, but morality is, is more important, is what I'm noticing. If you make a moral change, the ethics, I think, are going to happen naturally. Something I'm learning about the more that I find out about God's way and the more that I desire to live God's way is that Though I cannot change the children, I cannot force them to change, and when I, I'm using the children here because that's what we're talking about in this video, but this goes for anybody. I can't change others. And for a long time I felt powerless about that, and I also wanted to change them, which is very unloving demand from me. What I'm now coming to see is that I can uphold and create an environment that is, upholds love and truth and morality and ethics um, f and that it encourages emotional expression. I can do that and in fact I'm responsible for doing that as the parent. Now I'm limited in how, in, when I say I'm limited, I can do that in whatever condition I'm at, but the amount of, um, like my understanding directly impacts on how easy that is, or when I say easy, once, uh, like I found, once I really feel a truth in my own heart, acting on that becomes a lot easier. When I've only heard it in theory, it's not really part of me yet, and so I'm just sort of taking actions to try and do that thing, and that's quite a different experience. And so what I'm learning is that I really need to get a lot of education myself on what is loving from God's perspective, what is truthful from God's perspective, who is God, you know, what is this entity that, that has created me, like how, how does God's universe work, how do the laws work, what are my experience with the world of those laws. And once I've had the experience myself, I find it a lot easier to come up with, like I am more open to inspiration and ideas from others. Um, I get a... Um, an idea more about um, uh, things that I can do and I also have a firmer feeling of like no hold on what's happening right now 
doesn't feel right and so something needs to change. Often I don't know what needs to change and again it's usually external um, sources who help me to see what, what's really going on. But once I see what's going on, um, I am very, very keen to make the changes and go, right, so how can I now like help to either correct this thing in myself firstly and then in the environment around me. And because the children, I am directly responsible for creating um, the emotions that they inherited because I'd refused to feel mine from childhood and I've refused to forgive and repent on a lot of issues with my parents. The children now have certain addictive demands in order to not feel certain emotions that they inherited from me or now they're starting to act on those things and so they're starting to create and generate things in their own souls by their own choices. And so I have realized that I can uphold an environment and create an environment that honors love and truth above all other things, that actually upholds morals. Um, now, if I don't know about what those are, it's, it's harder, but it still doesn't mean that I can't strive for those things or aspire to do those things. And that's what I'm always doing. So as soon as I find out I'm doing something that's incorrect, then I change it. Um, if I find, and that's from God's perspective, not my own. Um, and if I, if I find I'm doing something that's really working and there's like positive results, and when I say positive results, it's positive for all. It's not just like, oh, now I'm alleviated from, you know, um, from something. It's like, no, no, this is benefiting me and them, like, uh, and others. Then it's like, all right, we're on the right track now. And so I'm learning about, at the moment, I feel like a lot of the lessons in my life are about really honouring truth, love, morality, and um, upholding a space where those things are of paramount importance, where God's opinion and God's truth is what matters, not mine and not another party's. We can feel those things, but at some point we're going to have to give them up. And so we both, uh, so all parties need to like go for God's truth, not their own individual truth. Now this is something that um, I'm hoping that this experiment helps the children to see as well. Um, uh, what I'm hoping to is to create an environment where they have the opportunity to become more sensitive to God's laws and to become more sensitive to their own soul condition. And if they can kind of become more sensitive to the, to feel themselves. One, to feel what they feel, like that, that's coming into them, but also to be very sensitive about what's coming out of them. And this is more important to me, is how they're treating other people. They're very cluey about when they're being treated badly. And sometimes they're not even being treated badly, but they think they're being treated badly. Um, if it's not going their way or their addictions aren't getting met. And when I talk about addictions, I'm meaning anything that they use to avoid feeling emotions, basically, or avoid connecting to themselves. Um, and but they're not so sensitive about when they treat other people badly and part of this experiment where they're moving out of home is to teach them no there is actually consequences on your soul when you treat other people badly and if you don't take self-responsibility that's treating yourself and others badly and when I say badly it's that you're treating, you're basically, one, missing out on so many good things of being self-responsible, satisfaction of doing things for yourself, the satisfaction of having a clean and tidy home and of accomplishing and finishing and completing a task, um, the satisfaction of actually giving a gift to another person, um, the, the satisfaction of be, not having to rely on somebody else for something. Um, then there's the opposite of like, you know, if you aren't self-responsible, there's always a demand on someone else for things. There's always an expectation that they should do something for you. Um, you feel hard done by, you feel it's unfair. There's a lot of different things that, that, that go on. And I'm trying to create a situation where through their own experience, they can find these things out. Because when I talk to them about it now, it's like, it's like, <laughs> so I'm, that's sometimes how I feel. I feel like the kids are there watching, and they're like, "Oh, this is what they're this is what they're seeing and hearing." And they're like, "Yes, mum. Yes, mum. No worries, mum." And really, it doesn't impact or hit them. So my words are cheap. Um, unfortunately, that's something that I created and now I'm remedying. 
and now we're um, doing some action. So I'm excited about this experiment and uh, the kids, uh, I think you're going to have some mixed emotions because they, um, they moved out uh, to trial it while they didn't have to before the 5th of January so they could still access and use the house for cooking and uh, getting their clothes and things. So they're enjoying the sleeping outside aspect but they haven't really had the living outside aspect. So we'll see how that goes. Um, this, I want to document this whole experiment um, and I'm hoping the kids will do some interviews as well, but we'll have to wait and see whether they want to or not. And um, depending how angry they get, <laughs> the whole situation will depend on, I think, whether or not they'll be willing to do them. But I'll be doing um, regular updates, either via film um, or some blog posts and photographs. Um, and I'll keep you posted about what I find out about myself and about how the experiment goes and what happens with the children. So what were the physical things that we literally had to do in order for this experiment to begin and start? So firstly, um, the idea came and um, the inspiration for the idea and some external feedback, uh, both about the children and where they're at and about, what, um, and about my personal emotions and um, how to uh, be a really truthfully loving parent. Those things all happened. Then um, I had some ideas and some inspiration. The inspiration's not my ideas, and a lot of the ideas, to be honest, I have to attribute to their sources, which are my good friends, Jesus, Mary, Tristan, and to um, my spirit guides. Um, they give me so much help, and I'm so grateful for that. I, I really am excited by the suggestions that they give me. And um, when I say that, though, I'm the one who's choosing to act on these suggestions and I want to be really clear about that this is my decision. I'm not, this is something that I really want to do and I feel really passionate about doing. Not because I feel I have to do it, but because I want to do it. I want to like, um, I want to be a better parent and I also want um, the children to have the opportunity to actually feel what it feels like to live in a loving environment and to have the opportunity to act in different ways and learn from that and yeah I really want to do that so so I want to be really clear that though I get a lot of inspiration and suggestions um, I don't just do it because I'm like someone suggested it I'm doing it because I really want to do it and I feel like it's really important and I also it's quite fun so um, <laughs> yeah <laughs> let's see how it goes so the physical things we did I got some you know some inspiration I then made a plan so I had to really and uh, this is something I used to just like sort of, I did used to just take suggestions and act on them. <laughs> now I, I'm learning the importance of structure and planning. And so I did come home and I made a plan and I thought about, well, how is this going to work out and what are the variables that I can see and what am I going to do under certain situations? And um, for instance, like what if it's really wet and raining? Am I going to like feel real guilty and then the kids are going to come inside? Like, you know, am I going to back down if, you know, this and if that and all these different scenarios? Um, and I've come to the conclusion that no, like um, they, uh, f for a period of time, they can, uh, there's an outside access to our toilet and they can access that periodically. Um, but during the day, they have to access their own outside toilet facilities, which um, we've set up um, because we had it from when we built the house and um, a friend of ours uh, built, built a little toilet set up that they can use, uh, like a compostable one. And that is, a, as an aside, is a benefit because they're actually using their poo and it's um, going to be like put with sort of wood, a wood chip and earth and composting materials. It's going to break down, it's actually going to become food for um, growing stuff in our garden areas. Um, so that's a inadvertent bonus for them using their outside toilet. Um, now, what if they sneak inside was another thing that, um, a question that I was asked. I was like, well, if they sneak inside, I'm going to lock the doors because I'm serious about them not coming in. And they are coming up with hypothetically, well, mum, what if? What if? But what if? But what if? And so all the what ifs are indicators to me of like, okay, well, here you've got um, something that you need to feel about. Or here you've got a guilt area. Or here you've got something that you need to look more closely at. So they've been pretty helpful. Um, 
Yes, I planned anyway, and I, I planned and I looked at what resources I had and whether it was feasible before I made the decision. So um, can we have, like, you know, do we have the facilities that they can actually have food outside um, that's not going to, like, perish? Um, it, does it accommodate three, three people using it? Um, do, you know, is it, um, you know, are the conditions uh, actually going to work um, with the space that we have and all of those things. I had to look at logistical, um, physical things that we do or we don't have and how that would work. And I came up with solutions for all the different things that I, I came up with that might not work. So I know how it can work. <laughs> um, because of the way that I'm implementing this program, the kids have to discover um, how it's going to work and uh, because they've never had to set up their own kitchen because they've never really had to um, Be fully self-sufficient. They're going to run into some challenges and some obstacles I suspect and at those times I'll see how they act and if they ask questions I'll answer them otherwise I'll probably leave them to work it out for a period of time and See how that eventuates and that will bring up feelings for me um, and not running to their rescue and also I think it will bring up some feelings for them which I feel will be very beneficial um, if they choose to feel them. So yes, yeah, so we had, um, so there was the planning, so planned and then organised any physical things that I needed to organise. So having a fridge available or um, I didn't put everything into position, I just made sure that I know where all my bits and pieces are. So I planned the physical elements and then I also planned the um, like a spiritual and emotional things. What are my objectives and my aims? Um, what were the things I was really focusing on here that I felt one were the main issues so that I was very clear about why am I doing this so that I can explain clearly to the children about why this is happening um, and so they know and also what is it that needs to change? So in this instance, it's, it's the attitude. Um, and attitudes not about them taking physical actions. It's about them making an emotional shift within themselves that is real and true and heartfelt um, that then um, It's like dealing with the causes inside them of why they're not doing that already and that will create an emotional shift on others. So they need to so I looked at a lot of different areas so physical um, the spiritual um, lessons uh, the emotional things how it was really going to work um, as far as I could see those things on paper. Um, we'll find out firsthand as we actually engage the experiment. And we might need to modify things as well from my original plan. So we did that. Then I told and informed the children of it and, um, and also then the ways that I was willing, like the gifts I was willing to give in order that they could, um, you know, uh, create their own tent set up and their own home and that, um, you know, the things that I was willing to loan them um, and, and the conditions I was willing to loan them under and the reasons why I was doing it. <clears throat> so we did that. Then they had to act upon some of those opportunities or those gifts that I was giving them. So they had to do some work to make some money. And once they'd made some money, um, they, they, we then had to go and have a look at um, well, what, what's available and what options and what, and we had to have some discussions as well and I didn't lead those discussions this time. I just said, how are you going, I just asked some questions. I said, how, well, what are you going to live in? Like, what do you want? And they, at first, like, were describing these, like, you know, like huge um, complexes and buildings and houses and caravans and, and I was like, awesome, well, let's look up that and, and then it's like, next question is, uh, so that we did some research on the internet, um, well they did some research on the internet and, um, and they looked at it and they saw the prices and they were like, well I, I have like, you know, $10, I don't have 55000 for a caravan. <laughs> so they got a bit of education of what they want and I've encouraged them to keep dreaming and saying, well, you know, like that's what you can aim for and, you know, because we're now looking at you not necessarily moving back into your parents' house but you're looking to the long term, like you might move into your parents' house for a short period of time, but don't make that a permanent option. Like let's look at these things that you want. So set your sights far and then figure out how you're gonna get there. So those are the kinds of things that I'd say to them and then I'd ask them, well, how could you get there? And then they'd brainstorm and come up with different ideas. Um, some more than others. <laughs> and sometimes they're resistive and sometimes they didn't even want to engage the conversation, so we didn't engage the conversation. Um, 
at that time. I suspect they'll come up at other times. So the kids had to decide sort of on what they were doing, uh, like what they wanted to set up, and they found setups that they wanted, and then they found that what they realistically, like they were actually worked out on their own about if they worked for so many hours, they'd get so much money, and this would mean that they could buy so much. So then they, I suppose, inadvertently came up with a budget of like, well, okay, if I work this much, then I can have a tent within two weeks, you know, kind of thing. Um, or if I work for 10 hours, I can, um, you know, have a hundred dollar tent, um, cause I was paying them $10 an hour. And, um, yeah, very interesting. Like then we went, we had to go to the camping store and I just stood back and said, okay, well, and there's a lovely assistant. So look, the kids are looking for, um, tents. Would you be able to just, uh, I, you know, uh, I said to the kids, well, what, 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 what are you here for? And they said, oh, we need some tents. And so the lady then sort of like looked to me and, and I said, oh, look, they're purchasing their, their tent, so um, maybe if you just give them some information. And I just said, kids, you need to ask any questions that you've got um, for things that you need to find out. So then they did their camping store experience and um, found out different, different things. So they purchased a tent um, and then sort of came home and o over weeks, <laughs> did take weeks they um they thought about oh hold on we're gonna need plates to eat up oh hold, like mum can we use your plates no okay well we're gonna have to purchase plates oh mum can we take this no okay so we're gonna have to work out how we're gonna get that or what can we use or you know so they it sort of by it sort of through them um yeah it's sort of been a, a slow build up of them realizing what they need to do and what they need to do. So we went and purchased the physical items that they needed um, for their tent set up. And that was very interesting in itself as well. Um, oh, no, I should, I'm just keep going on asides. I'll do that in a minute. But yes, yeah, so they purchased the items they needed. Uh, they did some trial runs. They actually t set their tents up in the house as a dry run just to check them out. And then um, they moved out. They chose to move out earlier than um, their specified date um, because they wanted to trial their setup and to sleep there and to see what it was like while still having access to the house. That was their reasoning. They didn't want to like just go cold turkey and all at once. They wanted still to have some uh, experiences of the niceties of home. Um, so off they went and um, they set their tent set up and they tested them all out. And that's yeah. So so far they've got a tent uh, or a ground mat, a tent. A gazebo, uh, one of them doesn't have a gazebo because they haven't made enough money to get one yet. Uh, they had to buy extra like sort of strong tent pegs so that their tents wouldn't fly away. And they've brought their crockery, so cup plate bowl and a knife and fork set each and a sharp knife. So those are their purchases so far. And yeah, we'll see, we'll see what else they come up with with what they need. Um, in the future. So um, some of the household uh, like general kitchen items um, like sort of uh, bigger bowls and things um, they're going to use from the kitchen setup that we already have and then over time as they come to want specialised equipment um, they'll need to access that in some way. So we often go to opportunity shops and, and things like that and, and get different bits and pieces that they can afford with their budgets. So those are the physical actions that I took from the inspiration and the ideas, to the planning, to the um, to the uh, considering the spiritual and um, objectives, and the lessons that I both want the parent and child to know, and then the physical things that we've done so far, up until now, to create that. So they move out tomorrow, on Sunday, and uh, yeah, they'll be have access to the house to get um, they can get enough supplies for a month. So they have to take enough supplies to their um, tent for a month. Um, washing, they came up with the idea that they'd pay 50 cents a load to do the washing as a contribution. So um, we'll see how that goes. They're a bit uh, skimpy on uh, their cash. So there has been talk that they'll hand wash their clothes. We'll see how that goes. We got a, uh, an experimental um, hand washing, uh, like camping bag that you can like put a few items in and like hand wash them sort of it's like a portable washing machine in a bag so they're going to test that out 
um, and we'll see how it goes um, and we'll see, we'll see what else happens. And as we go along with this experiment, it will modify and change um, depending on what happens and what comes up. As soon as there's an attitude shift, then um, different things are in place. So that was something as well in my planning is if there is an attitude shift, I also want to reward that so that they get a feedback system of like, oh wow, when I deal with some emotional things or some things inside of myself, those um, there's actually a really positive thing that happens then. Um, and that will help them like by taking action that will build some faith. And, um, and I'm hoping that they get the experience of that as well. Well, I want to um, make that experience more transparent, like help them to become more sensitive to that by taking some physical actions to demonstrate that. Um, so part of this is a bit about demonstrating what I understand or am learning because I don't understand that much yet about God's laws and sort of making that transparent for the children. Um, just like others have helped me and given me feedback, they have, um, yeah, through their love of, of me, they have actually helped me to see what's really going on or things um, by making them transparent for me to see. And so that's what I would like to um, to hand on to the children as well. So I'm excited about this experiment um, and yeah, we'll see how it goes. Um, I've decided to document um, this experiment by taking videos, doing blog posts, taking photos. Um, I'm hoping to do quite a bit of videos because it's kind of easy just to sit down, then it takes a lot of time to do a lot of writing um, and just publish like what's happening and then it's like a real snapshot of where we're at, what's going on. It's like, uh, Mary was saying it's like reality TV. <laughs> I'm not sure how excited I feel about that, but <laughs> but I think it would give like a real thing. And also, as a I regret not taking a lot of video and um, like really sharing what happened nine years ago when it was so bad in our home and everything was just nightmare and chaos and people don't believe me now and unless they knew me, if they know me, they, they believe me. And I, I just want to demonstrate like how a parent's emotions and soul can, like, you know, condition of love affects the whole environment and it affects the way children interact and relate and everything. And if parents make real soul changes, everything in their life changes and it has positive effects on the children, on the environment, um, and everything. So I really want to um, try and demonstrate that. Um, and I feel like one of the best ways to do that is just by doing some short little videos of like, look, this is what happened today or this is the week's update. You, so at the moment, my intention is that you'll be seeing more videos on this experiment, which is the kids move out of home experiment. Um, yeah, and, and I really, um, you know, you might not be at a stage where you, go, you, you want your kids to move out of home, but you can apply these same principles of finding an issue of love in, in your home that's out of harmony with love, finding the truth on that issue. You may have received personal feedback or you may have just watched some Divine Truth material and, and going, oh, wow, yeah, I can see this thing that I'm doing all the time in my life. Wow, okay. So I've identified the issue here. Then, like, looking at, like, okay, like, what are some of the positive things if I do that? What's God's truth about this thing? And then, like, coming up with a plan of how to experiment with that. So I've done a short video on my very first experiment with truth. And that was just by stating truth and taking the time to sit down, state truth, and then it progressed into feeling how I felt in any given moment, like as soon as the feeling came up, stopping and feeling that thing. And that was my first experiment of, of finding something that, that was not working, applying the truth to it, both God's truth and my personal truth, um, taking some action, so stopping and feeling in that, in that example, um, which then built my faith because there was in for me there was immediate results in my environment that I could see so it was with the children um, I could see an immediate thing happen so they would cling and, and be all over me and as soon as I stated the truth of what was really going on for me or how I felt and if I felt it was even like had a longer lasting period of time but if I stated it even they'd go off and quietly play so I got this immediate feedback thing and then I had to remember all of those things and go, hold on, no, that happened, hold on, that happened. So that built my faith. And um, 
this this experiment is just a nut is exactly that same cycle except that i understand a little bit more about god's truth i understand a little bit more about god's uh like some of the principles i understand a bit more about um like god's way and i really want a relationship with god so i'm experimenting my own personal self with asking god like what's right and um, really listening when um, I get feedback from Jesus, Mary, Tristan, or people I know who are in a higher condition of love than I am, and like just going, okay, they're saying this. I need to experiment and apply that and see if 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 what they're saying is you know is true or not. Really, is is what I'm doing. Um, I have faith now that it is because I've everything that I've ever tried for myself that has been um, basically like an opportunity given to me or uh, mentioned to me and I've done it, it's worked. So I actually have a faith um, that, um, yeah, that the, the, uh, the feedback I get is, is going to help me. Um, and that, that's a really nice feeling now for me. Um, but when I first started, I didn't have that feeling and I didn't know whether it'd work. So for me, this experiment with the kids is about me learning some principles of love and also changing some unloving things that I'm doing as a parent. Um, and it's also an opportunity to set up an environment that the kids um, have to um, feel what it's like to live in a, a more loving environment and hopefully get acquainted with their real soul condition and also to see how they actually treat others and themselves. Um, and hopefully learn the benefits of doing things God's way rather than their way. But they'll have to choose to see that. So we'll see how it goes. So that brings me to the conclusion of this video, which is, I think, sort of in to sum it up, is about a family doing an experiment in order to um, see how their choices affect others and giving the opportunity to change those through an emotional process. Um, I'm looking forward to this experiment and I'll see you next time with my next update.